This is Dan Bedondi reporting for the InfoWars Nightly News. And we're on the corner of Laurel and Dexter, right here in Watertown, Massachusetts. And we're going to go through the neighborhood because it's a neighborhood that was on lockdown. We're going to ask the citizens here what they experienced through this lockdown. Yeah, do you want to uh, describe in your own words uh, your thoughts? I mean, whatever they are, what are your thoughts on the entire procedure that was done? I think it was dealt with way too uh, chaotically than it should have been dealt with. Uh, I was walking down Hazel Street and um, a cop pointed his gun at me and then they called SWAT in and then SWAT came and picked me up by a shield and they threw me in the back of a car and then dropped me off in the middle of Newton. So they dropped you off in the middle of nowhere and what time of night was it? Uh, what time was that? Like five? Yeah. Broad daylight. Just dropped me off, took me out of the cuffs and told me to walk. And when they uh, put the cuffs on you, did they read you your Miranda rights? Nope. So you were unlawfully detained from being on public property? Yeah. Hey, during the lockdown, did you get a message from the authorities that there was going to be a lockdown? <clears throat> no, I did not. And uh, did they call it a lockdown or something else? They came here knocking at my door. It was a, the first person that came here was a woman. She was a, a policewoman. She was the first contact we had with the police from when everything started. Okay, now did they ask to search your house? Um, they told me they wouldn't have searched the house. So they didn't ask you, they just told you? They told me they weren't coming in to search. There was, um, she didn't do it, actually. There were some people that came later on to do it. And uh, did they command you to leave your home? They told us we had to leave, yes. And uh, did you comply? Um, no, it's just that I couldn't get everything that I needed to get. I had, I'm a diabetic and I needed medicine and, and I had left some of my stuff here. And they wouldn't let me come back to get it. They said they'd call an ambulance. And were they armed? I believe that they were because the people who walked us out, they had shields. And it, yeah, they were. Yeah. And uh, was you scared at all? Yes, I was. Very. <laughs> yeah. Very. And, uh, did you feel that uh, safe being around these police? I was. I, I did feel safe, and I know they were protecting us, but I also felt scared. I think they were very gruff. And when was the lockdown lifted? Actually, I was at, my son came to pick pick us up at the police station, and we went to his house. It was about 11 o'clock at night. I was calling the Watertown police and the FBI, and no one told me that we could come back in yet. They kept shuffling it back and forth, um, saying that. Call um, the state, state said call Watertown. So I said, well, we'll just come here, and what we'll do is if they don't let us in, then we'll go back to my son's house. And um, that's what we did, but there was nobody here. One thing I was very, very upset about is that when we were leaving here, all my the lights were on in the house, TVs, you know, and um, back door, they had gone the back door down my basement, and they told me, I said, let me just close all my doors and lock up, and they said, no, they would do it. I came home. Back door was open. This is hours now later. Back door was open. Front door was open. Basement door was open. Lights were on. TVs were on. No one did anything. So they basically left your house unsecured with the doors wide open where nobody was home? Yes, they did. That that bothered me a lot. And you say there's bullet holes in your car here? Yes, this is a bullet hole here. Um, Are they going to try that quick? And there's a bullet hole here. I shot out the window on the side there. And in my car, there's a bullet hole as you can see, I don't know where it is. Maybe it's in the car somewhere. I have no <laughs> idea. But the back window is blown out and the side window is blown wow, out. Wow, you said right there in the street is where the guy yes. was shot, right? That's where everything started. They, there was like the car, the Honda, and the uh, Mercedes, and yeah, that's where it was. And did you witness any of that? Yes, I did from beginning to end. Um, could you describe, if you could, describe everything you've seen from beginning? From beginning, we thought, my husband thought it was just kids with um, fireworks. And he opened up the window and asked them not to because the people downstairs were elderly and we didn't want to wake them. And someone yelled out, close your window and get in. And now I believe it was the cop. At first, we didn't know who it was. And all of a sudden, there was like crossfire and bombs going off. And so it was quite. Uh, and before they shot the man, was the man laying in the street? Not here. Up here at the corner. Oh, at the corner, okay. Yeah, but the shootout started here and worked its way up. Unbelievable. Yeah, it is unbelievable. Yeah. I, I, I can't believe it because um, 
<laughs> I was in Florida when all of, when the bombing happened at the marathon. I was worried about my kids. Called them up. Um, a friend of ours was traveling back here with us, and her husband was like, "Ah, maybe we better stay." And my husband was like, "What's our chances of this happening at at, at our house?" Uh, not even hours later, here we go. There's bullet holes in the house. Bullet hole there. It took like 10 minutes for for this whole thing in front of my house, and then it landed over there. And I can't understand till to this day how he got through the police and everything. All the, the police were swamped over there. What they did, they disrupted this entire world for a day. We initially got a report from the police department that it was voluntary searches, but then after talking to the residents, uh, we found out that they weren't asking if if they could have permission to enter homes. They were just forcefully entering people's homes uh, to search. Peter, uh, did you get a message from the authorities that there was going to be a lockdown? No. No, you didn't get no message? And um, did they call it a lockdown or something else? Uh, you know, I don't know. They just walk in, you know what I mean? And they, and they say, let's get out of here. You know, it's like, let me put my shoes on. You know, they don't, they don't want to let me put my shoes on either. So did they knock at your door just walk in? They knocked the door. But you know what I mean? The door, they almost... They, they almost pushed the door through them. I mean. okay, and, uh, did they ask you to search your home at all, or they just did it? They just did it. You know, they just came in and uh, they're going through. And uh, did they command you to leave your home? Yes. And uh, did you comply to that? Uh, no, really, because, you know, I had uh, the old people next to me here, and uh, I really got really mad. I told the guy to, <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? And were they armed with guns? Got guns and shields and everything, you know what I mean? <laughs> Machine guns and everything. Was you scared? I wasn't scared. I didn't care about that, you know. But, you know what I mean? Don't tell me to leave my house when you have a dead one up there and the other one was halfway up the square. And you come here and you tell me, you know, let's search your house, you know what I mean? Come on. I, I work with you along, you know, but be nice, a little bit um, nicer. And uh, did you feel safe being around the police? <laughs> I, I, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I was I was here by myself when the shooting was going on. <laughs> you know, I, okay, they were there, but uh, I, we left, and they say let's lock the doors. They say no, no, we we'll take care of it. We we'll lock your doors and everything. We came home midnight, and everything was open, and nobody was around here. So they left your house also unsecured and wide open. Exactly, and nobody was around here. What takes anybody? Anybody can walk in. Oh, the, this door was open, the, door, the inside door was and, open. Um, you had neighbors downstairs, the elderly, right? And uh, where, uh, did they force them out? Yes. Yes, and not, not a nice way either, you know what I mean? Like, uh, hurry up, hurry up. The, man, the old man, he wants to put his shoes on. No, 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 come on, you know, the way you are. You know, say, hey, they don't speak English well, you know. Let me take care of it, you know what I mean? But, you know, they, everything was rush, rush. We're going up so the street. They mistreated the elderly then, right? Yes, yes. yes. Yes, you know, I didn't like that. You know, like I said, they tried to do the job, you know what I mean? No. But uh, on this point here, I got very upset, very upset. Okay, Lita, um, did you get a message uh, ahead of time from the authorities that there was going to be a lockdown? Not that I'm aware of, no. So you didn't hear nothing on TV, radio? Yeah, I heard of something, but nothing uh, personal. No phone calls to the house or anything like that. And did they call it a lockdown or something else? Uh, it wasn't necessarily in the lockdown, but I heard it from the news and it said just stay inside your house. Something similar. Okay, and the police knock at your door? Yes. And uh, did they ask to search your house or they just searched it? Um, they wanted to search the house, but my grandma said nobody was in there. And then they proceeded to ask my grandma for my, my uncle lives upstairs. And the house is a deadbolt. And my grandma said, you know, there's no one up there. I didn't hear anyone go up the stairs, but they still made her give the house key and unlocked it with that key and searched upstairs and all the way up to the attic. Well, they they um, didn't want to give the key back, but they ended up giving the key back. My grandma, they did. And did they command you at all any time to leave your home or stay in the home? Uh, so it was stay inside. And did you comply with that? Yes. And were the police armed at any time they pointed them at you? Uh, they didn't point, but they were armed and intimidating. And so, did they scare you at all? I mean, the whole situation? Yeah, it was scary overall for everyone, but um, they it wasn't really the Watertown police. It was more of, like, the government. I don't know what kind of police they were, but it was the the, the Army, yeah. FBI, yeah, the, those people that were scary. Yeah, um, I don't understand the martial law for one person, taking that it's just a person who's 19 years old and they already knew that he might not have been heavily armed to go to that kind of extent to make everyone feel a little 
um, to make everyone feel like it was a war zone when in reality it wasn't. But the thing overall that caught my eye is that my friend on Franklin Street um, lived across the street and the army people did a huge search in their garage. Um, but the, the, the boat was directly across the street. They didn't search the boat, not once. They didn't even go around it. That's, that's where the younger brother was found. That's where the suspect was. And it's funny because the police didn't find him when they did the thing. The person finally got to leave their house because they said everyone stay inside. He left his house and saw the blood on the boat, and that's how he was found. And I mean, I, Watertown Police did a great job, but I think that the person living in that house has all the credit. <laughs> We, you know, had to go through multiple checkpoints. We were searched ourselves. Other journalists on the scene were told to lay on the ground as they were searched. So it was a very, very touchy, very uh, intense situation to be in. Matter of fact, when we woke up, a big shootout that was done from over here and over. It was looked like a Vietnam so. <laughs> the, those guns that were going left and right. <laughs> yeah, all your neighbors' houses got hit. Oh, we did too. Mine too. We got a storm door broke. They passed my storm door. And the other door is our And the door oh, going upstairs, yeah. There's a bullet in there. Nice if I never get some far more feet on this side, yeah. it would have kept me in my bedroom. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Nice when you're sleeping, too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Were guns pointing at you any time, and did they tell you to put your hands up in the air or anything? Not me, but my boyfriend. So your boyfriend had his hands up in the air, and they were searching him? Yes, because he came out to check his diesel on the back of his truck. Did your house get shot up at all? My front window and her side got shot like four or five times inside. Wow. Yeah. My windows and my truck, but it's fixed now. So. They were pretty much right here in front of my house, and they were just shooting down that direction. Um, that went on for a couple minutes, and then there were there were two more booms, with the last one just really lighting the entire neighborhood up. Um, it yeah. shook the house, set off all the car alarms. Um, the, there was a heavy gunfire for a couple minutes, and then um, I saw the, the first suspect, the older brother, run along the black fence and go across the street. Uh, officer ran out, met him in the street, tackled him to the ground, um, was standing over him, and then the black SUV came and ran over the, the older brother. So the, a black police SUV ran over the older brother? Oh, no, the, the, the black SUV that was stolen, the Mercedes. Oh, okay, so his brother ran him over. Oh, yeah, yeah. And um, when the guy was laying on the ground, what happened after that? Uh, he was dead. And were they armed? Did they point guns at you at all? Um, yeah, when we came out, they were all armed. And then um, they didn't necessarily point it at us, though, but they were just all armed. And were you scared at all? Uh, yeah, of course. <laughs> I think I was terrified the whole day. <laughs> and uh, did they make you put your hands up? Um, when we when we came out, we put our hands up and they searched us. But other than that, we just walked down. The and did they ask you at all to search you? Um, yeah, they they asked. They just, well, they told us that they were going to be searching us. And we just talked to several residents here on Laurel and Dexter, right here in Watertown, Massachusetts, and we got fragments of bombs in peep embedded in people's houses, uh, car windows blown out. Uh, bullet holes in people's windows, the sides of the houses, and people's mixed reactions about the cops. A lot of people's houses didn't get searched, but a lot of people's did. A lot of people said the cops are good, and a lot of people said they weren't. And we had, uh, you know, we talked to a kid that got arrested and got dropped off to the town next door without his rights being read to him, just dropped off in the middle of nowhere. We talked to an older couple that said the 95-year-old lady who is vulgarly forced out of a home, uh, for, uh, vulgarly forced out of a home to be searched, and they actually yelled and swore at a 95-year-old lady. But it's just a lot of chaos here in uh, Watertown, Massachusetts, and this is Dan Badani reporting for the InfoWars Nightly News.